So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to talk about uh, tower gardens and um, learning about how to grow your own food and living a sustainable life. Um, it's more important now than ever to, uh, because the rising cost of um, food costs and food shortages in America and Canada and all over the world. Um, the, here in the US and Canada, uh, we have tower gardens that are available for us to grow our own food, whether you're growing um, from a beach apartment like me, that's my tower garden shining bright, <laughs> um, whether you are in Canada like Ashley or Florida like Hannah, we are growing our own food all over the world. Um, and especially in Canada where the temperatures are cold the majority of the year, like what a better place to grow your own food, in my opinion, um, and for your entire family to live on. Um, it just makes sense. And you're going to hear today from Ashley and Hannah and myself about how beneficial it is to grow your own food with a tower garden, um, the cost, the benefits, and the impact that you make on the environment. I just want to share my screen real quick. Um, I want you guys to see like, um, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic that um, we don't really like talking about too much, but <laughs> it did happen. Um, there were a lot of food shortages, um, just like this, how you went into your local grocery store and things weren't available. Um, this is still happening right now. There are grocery store shelves in certain parts of the country that don't have food. And a lot of the food uh, doesn't really have a lot of nutritional value, which we'll talk to you about that because it's being shipped in from all over the world. And this is one of the reasons why I started um, with my tower garden in the first place. And also, oh, I just closed my screen share. Hang on one second, you guys. Sorry about that. I want to bring this up again. And so, like I said, if you're living in some place like Canada, it looks like this in the winter time. Now, who wants to be standing outside of your grocery store when it's this cold out, when you can just go right into your living room and uh, grow your own food, clip it off, and you don't even have to leave the house? I absolutely love it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, we have an amazing program that teaches kids how to grow their own food, whether it's in school, we have a lesson plan that kids get to learn. And when kids get to learn about growing their own food, they actually like to eat it because they see where it comes from and um, they want to participate in it as well. And as well as, um, you know, like this is the tower garden. I just want you to be able to see it. Ashley has one behind her, so you can actually see hers in person gardening and you don't have to get your manicure messed up, which is what I love. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop this screen share and I am going to pass it on over to Ashley. Hi you guys, thanks so much Sasha. And yeah, if you guys can see it from her photo, this is the tower garden here in all of her beauty. I just started my plants up a couple of weeks ago again. So I'm super excited to have it all growing again. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the benefits of having a tower garden, um, what makes it different from traditional gardening and then the cost as well for both US and Canada. So the cool thing about this is it's a little bit different from your usual hydroponic garden. So these tower gardens use aeroponics. So it's actually the same technology that NASA uses, which is very, very cool. So they only grow plants with water and nutrients. So the nutrients in the water are kind of falling down the whole entire tower, um, like a little waterfall. So you get that nice waterfall, waterfall sound as well, which I really love, it's very peaceful. <laughs> and you don't have to have any dirt, there's no weeding, it's very, very simple. And aeroponic systems actually grow plants three times faster. They've done a couple studies on them and they've seen that and they produce 30% greater yields on average. Planting a lot more um, growing season, which is really great. The plants are producing a lot more so you can kind of continue harvesting off the same plant, um, which means you'll be enjoying abundant fruits or not fruits, but some fruits and veggies. Um, for just weeks after planting, which is great. Another thing is with traditional gardening, you have to deal with a lot of pests. You have diseases that plants can get, weeding all the time. I actually do have a garden, a traditional garden, but I 
put barely any effort into it anymore because this just produced 10 times more <laughs> produce for me. And it was so much simpler. I was constantly weeding. I was trying to figure out why my soil wasn't working. It was kind of a hassle. And then this came along and it just kind of saved the day, which is really great. So it's a lot less time consuming. I'm a very busy person. So this is perfect. I just set it up and watch it grow. Um, it automatically delivers all the water and nutrients um, when they're needed most. And you're able just to grow strong, healthy plants with just very minimal effort. And they can better, the plants themselves being the way that they're grown, they're a lot stronger, they're a lot healthier. So even if you do have your tower garden outside, um, a lot of people have said that it protects them, that the plants protect themselves from pests and disease a lot easier, which is great and more naturally. Another thing with this too, is you're reducing your pesticide and chemical exposure a ton. This is a really, really big problem in our world today. I know that there's a really big move in trying to eat more organic, but as you can see with the price of inflation, it's very expensive to try and afford organic produce. And even when you're buying that top organic produce, you don't really know what's what's going into it or if it's 100% pesticide and herbicide free because the organic label itself you can you can fit a lot of things under that and there's a lot of ways that these big companies kind of slide things under the radar um, and then also there's just the soil isn't as nutrient dense as it used to be years ago and there's just a lot of um, chemicals in our air when it rains all that it gets it affects the plants and the nutrient density that it has so this is a way to grow that you can 100% guarantee that the plants that you have are going to be pesticide free herbicide free no chemicals um, and you can use really clean water as well which is great. So that makes a huge difference on the nutrient density density of it and just knowing kind of gives you that. Um, just that safe feeling of that you're feeding your family um, really, really good quality produce. Another thing too, is that it's perfect for small spaces. So people that have apartments, people that only have a tiny balcony to grow on, people that live in tiny, tiny spaces, you can still grow an entire garden if you don't have a yard, um, which is really great. So I have mine set up in my sunroom. It does not take up very much space. I even have the larger model, but there is one that's a little bit smaller too that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but it actually uses, it's a very vertical compact design and it's, it uses what's called a closed loop system technology. It requires about as little as 10% of the land and water traditional growing methods used in the garden. That's a huge, huge benefit for all my environmentally friendly friends who really care about that, which Hannah's gonna talk about in a second as well. Um, it's perfect for small spaces, whether you do it indoors or outdoors as well. So a lot of people actually do these on rooftops, on balconies, on patios, in their living rooms, wherever they can make it work. And it's really simple. And even if um, you don't have grow lights, you're growing outdoors, you can do that as well. Or you can grow indoors with the grow lights too. So really, really great for the environment. Another point that I want to make too is it's amazing if you don't have a green thumb. I know I 100% do not have a green thumb. I was not gifted that. My mother does. I do not. And I'm still able to successfully grow on the tower gardens. So you don't need to know everything about plants. You don't need to know what to do. It's very, very simple to figure out. And thankfully, we have an entire um, community page for support and the company itself that provides everything you need to know step by step to grow with this. And it's very easy to maintain once it's up and running. So all I have to do is check the water levels. I have to add nutrients, which I usually top up every week, just depending on what you're growing. And I check the pH levels just to make sure that it's all good. But it comes with everything you need. You don't have to buy anything separately. They make it very, very streamlined. And all I have to do is just kind of watch it grow. I sit back every morning and just see how my plants get bigger. And then I chop them and kind of keep them from not growing way too big because they can grow really big, um, which is really great too. And the last point I wanted to talk about, or actually I have two more before I talk about the cost of it, is actually how much money you save with tower gardens. I know for us here in Canada, inflation is absolutely crazy for produce. So I was at the grocery store the other day and paid about $9 for a tiny box of spinach and trying to get like fresh romaine and all these things. It's so expensive. And I eat a lot of that. I am plant-based. I'd like to take after my health and eat a lot of fruits and veggies, but it's just unrealistic to have those prices but this way i can grow my own i don't have to worry about running the store when i need fresh greens for my smoothie or salads or i can even grow things like cucumbers zucchinis fresh herbs anything that i need and people can even grow like things like melons and strawberries and basically anything that you can grow that isn't root vegetable you can put on the tower so it does save you a lot of money in the long run it's a hundred percent paid back the investment tenfold for me 
and I've only had it for three or four years and it's just made it so, so much better for me. And I, the, my last point is I do live in Canada. So about seven, eight months of the year, we cannot grow anything. Our growing season is extremely short and it's very cold where I am in, in Northern Ontario. And this is just save the day. So all winter long, I have fresh produce that I can grow. And it's just really, really great. Cause like you were talking about Sasha as well, the food shortages, it's been very hard to get um, fresh produce, especially during the winter months here even. So it's just kind of like, now I'm going to break down just the cost quickly before I pass it on to Hannah, but the tower gardens in Canada. So they have a payment plan option, which is really great. So for the tower garden home, which is the smaller version, which has a little microgreen extension on the top, it's about 7250 per month for 12 months, or you can choose to pay upfront. The tower garden flex, which is what I have right here, is a little bit larger of a water basin and it doesn't come with the lights, but I'll talk about that in a second. That one is $67.50 per month for 12 months. The lights are separate and they're not, um, you don't have to have them, but if you're growing indoors all year, I do suggest the lights, but they're 416 Canadian, but you can split that up as well. And in the USA, there's a couple more options. They have the tower garden home with the lights attached already, which is 85 Per month for 12 months or the tower garden home with no lights if you want to grow outdoors um, is 60 42 per month and then the flex which is the bigger one here in the us is 55 83 per month for the 12 months so with all those prices it's nice that they give the monthly installments because honestly i was paying more than that probably double that on fresh produce every single month so this has actually saved me money in the end um but yeah that's all I wanted to talk about, but I'm going to pass it over to Hannah, who's going to talk a little bit more about the kids program and the environmental benefits that this tower garden offers. Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. You did a great job explaining not only, you know, kind of the basics of it, but all the perks that you can have from having your own tower garden. So I'm going to do a quick screen share. Oh, I actually cannot, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, while Sasha works that out, see if I can do a screen share. Some of the main benefits for the tower garden come from the environmental impact. So there are four main ways that the tower garden is eco-friendly. So the first one is going to be it leaves a smaller CO2 footprint. So we all know that every single time we drive our cars, it's creating CO2. We're putting that out into the earth. So um, the more that we can grow our own food at home, the more that we can reduce those CO2 miles. And so the USDA reports that 88% of US households use their cars to drive back and forth. Oh, I can do my screen share now. Let me, I like to do visuals for the stats. <laughs> Give me just one second here. All right. So as I was saying, the USD, USDA reports that 88% of US households drive to and, for, to and forth from the grocery store, and that's about four miles each way. So that results in about 17 million metric tons of CO2 every single week just from driving to and from the grocery store. So about 8% of the typical American's carbon footprint comes just from food. And if you can grow even 20% of your own food, then you can reduce your carbon imprint by 68 pounds of CO2 every year. And on top of that, we all know back from elementary school science that plants filter the CO2 in the air. So you can literally breathe a little easier by growing your own plants and produce at home. And then also the food packaging. So about 23% of what ends up in our landfills is going to come from the packaging. We know that grocery stores do have that, the plastic bags, the packaging, the wrapping, and oftentimes it's not properly discarded. So it is going to end up in those landfills. So growing your own food at home is just one extra step to help make a difference for the environment with the carbon footprint and the food packaging. Ashley touched on this a little bit, but the tower garden, it's vertical. So it uses 10% the land of traditional farming as compared to the average farm in the US is 444 acres. So we're saving the environment by using yet less land. And then it's also just a little bit easier to fit into your home, into cities and rural areas, especially people in cities who they don't have a yard to grow traditionally. They might only have like a balcony or maybe they can grow on their roof or they can grow right in their home with the tower garden. So it just makes it a little bit more accessible for people. 
and it can help underserved urban communities, college campuses, airports, places where they need to feed a lot of people in a small amount of space. The Tower Garden recycles 100% of the nutrients and the water. It uses a closed system. So essentially there's a reservoir down at the bottom. It's going to pump the water up and it's gonna trickle down back into the reservoir so that it can be used again. And it uses 98% less water than traditional growing as if the 90% less land wasn't great, 98% less water. So essentially the reservoir is acting as a little miniature aquifer. And then as it pumps it up, it also has the nutrient solution in there as well. And yes, you do need to every now and then replenish the water because it is going to evaporate, especially if you have it out in the sun in the summer months. But overall, it's using way less water that you can use over and over again. And especially because only 3% of the water in the world is fresh water, and only one third of that is readily available to use for agriculture throughout our cities. So as our population is growing, it's even more important to focus on water conservation. And I know Ashley mentioned this a little bit as well, but there's not as much need for pesticides and herbicides. The pesticides can be very harmful to our environment. They contaminate soil, water, turf, other vegetation. But more than that, they can also be toxic to animals like birds, fish, and beneficial insects, non-targeted plants as well. So with the tower garden, every tower garden comes with our tower tonic, which is essentially a liquid nutrient solution. It's pH balance, it's got ionic minerals and plant nutrients, and it's going to help your plants become strong and healthy so that they can protect themselves from, from pests and diseases rather than needing to use the pesticides. And especially when you're growing indoors, you don't have to worry about the pests, so you don't need the unnecessary harmful chemicals. So with the kids learning program, what we're doing is an awesome guy named Steven Ritz. He started the Green Bronx Machine where he started bringing tower gardens to schools because they can be an educational tool, but they also just get kids really excited about learning and growing and eating us because you're engaging your class with hands-on project-based learning. They get to feel the plants. They get to be involved in it. So it improves school attendance, student performance helps elevate their diets and their minds as they start to learn the benefits of healthy eating. And especially in underprivileged schools where kids might be having junk food in the cafeterias, things like that, this allows them to grow their own food and eat it at school. You can take the tower garden wherever the learning happens because there's a tower garden dolly that you can get. So like he said, you can literally just roll it from classroom to classroom to the greenhouse, to the cafeteria, take it where the kids are, show them, get them involved. And it's no, you don't have to worry about messy students because there are no bugs, there's no soil. You can farm for the whole school, school year, you know, like Ashley mentioned, in places where it's cold, you can't do that with traditional growing. So this allows it to be accessible year round, to grow more and less time with fewer resources. So as we talked about 30% higher yield, three times faster, 98% less water, 90% less space. So some really awesome things. And there is also curriculum that's available. So there are lesson plans, learning materials that both teachers and students can use to learn and grow with the tower garden. So let me stop my share here and I'm going to pass it on to Sasha, who's gonna go over what you can grow and what you can eat. All right, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Let's see, I'm going to, um, let me see if I can get back to the speaker. I'm not really sure actually. Um, so yes, I will close this out, you guys. Sorry, I'm just trying to get back. Can you make me host, Hannah? Got it. All right, let's go back. There we go. So thank you so much for that. Um, so yeah, I am growing um, herbs, kale, radicchio, spinach, cabbage, and shishito peppers. I actually just planted them. I want you to see what these look like when you first, first start your planting. I did some last night. Um, it comes in this little um, 
you put you plant your seeds in there, your seedlings, and I put that in the window. I'm letting that grow. And so um, not only, you know, um, I love cabbage, so I'm making a lot of coleslaw for the summer. So I planted four cabbage um, heads, which is amazing. I'm making, um, and that's perfect for like summer barbecues. Uh, I make giant salad bowls. So I'll put everything from the tower garden into the salad bowl. Here's a little salad I made today for lunch, you guys. I've got some beautiful kale and the carrots and the tomatoes I did get from the grocery store because I'm not growing tomatoes, um, but you actually can grow that in the tower garden. Um, I add this to, I add the spinach into um, smoothie bowls. Um, I just put olive oil and lemon on here. That's all you really need, a little salt and pepper, and that's lunch. And the fun part is like, if I'm still hungry, I just walk over to my tower garden and I make another salad. Like I could eat on it all day. This morning for breakfast, I had an egg, a hash brown, and um, some uh, sauteed Swiss chard. Absolutely delicious. And so I'm... I'm so grateful that you guys came here today to learn more about the Tower Garden. If you want to learn more about how you can grow your own food, uh, just reach out to the person that shared this video with you. You can also become a Tower Gardener. You can save money. You can help support the environment and this beautiful planet. It's easy to do, you guys. I'm in a small space, a small apartment. You can do it from anywhere. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Hannah. And if you have any questions, just reach out to the person that shared this with you today. Bye.